In case you haven't already guessed, I get pretty excited about control surfaces, and today is no exception because today we get to talk about Switchblade's new AirFly for their live production systems like the M7 and the Turbo. In case you haven't guessed, the Switchblade looks an awful lot like Scarhoy's AirFly product, and we make no effort to hide it. The main difference between the two is, is that the Switchblade AirFly comes with a special configuration designed to control the M7 and the Turbo, as well as PTZ cameras. And you're wondering, how can a control surface that doesn't have a joystick on it control PTZ cameras? So we'll get into that a little bit. But first, let's take a closer look at the overview of the unit itself so you can get an idea of what the control surface is and what it does by looking at it firsthand. So right off the bat here, we can see we've got a program and preview bus. Uh, we can select whatever's in program or preview. We can cut and auto. Um, and then we also have a row of shortcuts, and I'll show you how those are programmed in a little bit when we get to the computer screen. We've got a row of PTZ controls. So we have four camera selectors. So if I select camera one here, and then I have a four-way button here, which lets me step through my PTZ speed, my exposure mode, uh, iris, uh, shutter, and then we also have the pan and tilt. Uh, you by pressing up and down on this button, we can pan and tilt our camera. And then if we hold shift, we can also zoom that in and out. Now, something else happens when we hold down the shift button. When I press shift, the uh, buttons that are our shortcuts turn into our PTZ presets. So if I hold down shift, I get 12 PTZ presets for any of the four cameras that I've selected here. Something else changes is that the um, overlay buttons get brighter too. And that's because we have two different ways of working with the overlays. And it's a either a one-step process or a two-step process to preview any particular input. So it depends on whether we're using something frequently or infrequently. So I'll show you infrequently first, which is hold down shift and press layer four. And then you can see our program and preview bus um, turn green to indicate that we're working with layer four. Nothing's happened on screen yet. Now, if I hit program, hit any one of these inputs in programs, something uh, different happens. I'll explain that in a second. If I hit preview, it's going to put any one of these inputs in preview in layer four. And layer four is set up as my picture in picture. So I'll select number two as my picture in picture. And when we get to the, uh, the overlay, the, when we get to the computer UI version, we can see what's happening in vMix when I do this. But basically I have just taken uh, input number two and brought it into the overlay. So now I have a picture in picture in preview and then I can uh, take that live. Now, if I want to program these buttons to be frequently used, so like I have a, a lower third, I would do shift and then layer one and I will uh, choose number 11 here. And nothing happened again on screen and the controller returned to the way that it was. However, now that I've programmed input number 11 to be uh, overlay number one, if I press overlay one, it now takes that on and off. Anytime I press this button, it will now bring up that overlay. So it's a one-step process and I can program each of these four inputs, each of these four overlay buttons to bring up whatever input I want on a routine basis versus um, if I use something infrequently, like I randomly need to stick a vMix call into a picture in picture, I can use that uh, shift overlay and preview that so I know what it's doing before it happens. So let's take a look at how all of this is working within the software so you can see how the two are working together. So what I've done is I've created a picture in picture here so you can see the control surface and then you can see vMix up here, uh, what it's doing when I'm uh, operating it. So the program row is pretty straightforward. It's going to put different inputs in program. Same deal with the preview. Uh, I can go through the different inputs or I can cut, cut and auto. And then we also have a uh, bank of shortcuts and then we have some PTZs here. And if I want to, let's see, cut that. The PTZs, if I select the camera here, uh, I am able to do the PTZ control that I was talking about. So I'm pressing different parts of the button, top and bottom to move up, down to move, uh, pan down, uh, tilt down. And then we also have uh, control over the uh, exposure mode. So I can change it from auto to manual. And then I have, um, I can adjust the iris and the shutter speed and then the, um, so let me put this back to auto so you can see me. And then we can also select um, three more cameras. And then I also forgot to mention uh, shift 
which can zoom in and out. And when we press shift, as I mentioned, uh, this gives us our PTZ presets, but it also does this cool thing with the overlays. So if I want to, um, if I want to bring up a infrequently used overlay, something like a, uh, I'm going to bring up um, this shot of my green screen as a picture in picture. And I'm going to do that in layer four, which is my picture in picture layer. So I'm going to hold down shift and then I'm going to press layer four and we'll see that the, um, both the program and preview buttons have turned green. And I can note that my um, PTZ, uh, my green screen input is number five there. So when I press number five in preview, it's going to bring it up in preview as a picture in picture. And the reason for that is that if it's an infrequently used, I want to make sure, I want to be confident of it before taking it to program. So now I auto and it takes that shot to program with the picture in picture in it. And the other way of using things is, as I mentioned, we can program any one of these four buses to have a dedicated input. So if I have um, a particular title that I use to display the different guests of a program, like I do down at uh, input 11 here, that's going to be what I want to program. So I'm going to do shift layer one, and then I'm going to do number 11. So when I press this, you'll see nothing's happened. Program preview remained the same. The control surface remain, uh, returns to its normal operation. But now when I press layer one, our uh, lower third appears. So if I press it, the lower third comes on. If I press it again, it goes off. If I make changes to it, I can come in here to the title editor. I can change it to my name and get out of there. So now when I bring it on, uh, it has my name there. So we can bring it on and take it off. And we can program any one of those four buttons to be uh, programmed to be a particular input. And that is one of the advantages of the way that the Switchblade Airfly works. The other, of course, is the PTZs. And then the last being the way that we use our presets, so um, our shortcuts. So I'm going to come in here to our shortcuts and I'll show you that I've created four so far um, for these first four buttons. And these four, first four buttons are set up to uh, control output number two and set different inputs to them. So what that means is that I've basically made this an ME bus. And if I want to use this to run the uh, screens in the, uh, in the entryway, I can send the NDI out of um, vMix to the screens there for decoding using uh, an NDI decoder like Kiloview. I can make this a 12 uh, input router. So if I want to choose from all of these, or if I have three different monitors and three different decoders, I can set um, this to be inputs one through four for uh, output two, inputs one through four for output three, inputs one through four for output four, and so on and so forth. Now I have um, in the uh, lower, lower right here, I'll show you one other cool thing is so that if I hold down shift, I can actually select input number 13. Even though there are only 12 inputs here, um, I can access inputs 13 through 24 over here. So I just did that by um, now I have uh, um, this is the NDI. I added the NDI output um, for output number two so that when I switch the different uh, buttons here, you can see that output number two, I brought it back in as an input, which is a little bit confusing, but it's the only way that I can show you um, that I have set these buttons up to control uh, that output number two. And I can do that for a variety of different things. Uh, anything in vMix that can have a shortcut, of which there are a lot, uh, can be set up to be controlled by this, uh, this particular input. So that's a few of the really cool things that can be done with the Switchblade Airfly, the special configuration that it uses in order to control PTZ cameras and control MEs and the unique way in that it handles overlays for the greatest amount of flexibility. And last but not least, I forgot to mention exactly how customizable these things are. So you can go in and you can change what each button does. If you want to move the zoom from out from having to hold the shift on it and you don't have a fourth PTZ camera to select, you can move that out. Um, you can rearrange the way the buttons work. You can completely redesign the way that this controls, or you can also use other configurations that have been pre-designed by Scarhoy or other users to control your live production. You want to have 
the controller work the way that you work, not making the controller, you know, not making your production revolve around the controller. You make it work the way that your brain works and your production works. You make it work best for you. And that is one of the amazing things about the Switchblade Airfly. If you have any questions about it or the bundles of M7 and Switchblade Airfly or Switchblade Airfly and Turbo, please don't hesitate to reach out to Eric at usbroadcast.co. Once again, I am Eric Pratt from US Broadcast. I want to thank you for watching and you all have a wonderful rest of your day.